Perfect. Almost everyone here. So good uh, afternoon, dear guests. Welcome to our eighth webinar on vertical farming as part of the Equine Plus project funded by the European Union through Erasmus Plus. Through this project, we aim to empower young individuals to embark on a journey that revolves around essential and interconnected topics on vertical farming and entrepreneurship, including topics on sustainability, climate change, ensuring food security, and adopting smart farming practices. Equine Plus is a two-year project that involves organizations from six different countries, France, Austria, Greece, Turkey, the Netherlands, and Portugal. You can learn about uh, the project through our website. I'm going to um, paste it in the comments now, and it's going to be in the... Ah, thank you, Marco. You pasted it already. Um, well, okay. Then allow me to introduce our distinguished speaker for today, Mr. Vincent Truffaut. I hope that I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, who works as the agronomy director of Futura Gaia. With a wealth of experience in agronomy and cutting edge technology, Mr. Truffaut is here to share his insights and expertise. He holds a PhD in, in agronomic sciences and his background uh, is in fruit and vegetable research. He has made significant contributions to the field of high-tech greenhouses, but let's hear from uh, him about him as he's going to start um, his presentation um, with uh, some small talk about uh, his background. Well, let's welcome Mr. Truffaut to share his insights and knowledge. Mr. Truffaut, the floor is yours. Thank you for this nice introduction. Um, let me share my screen. Um, so thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, to this talk. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, my journey as a as a researcher and also about Gaia and what we are doing. Uh, so basically, we are doing the picture that you are looking uh, right now. Uh, so it's quite different ways of uh, of working indoors uh, compared to the traditional, may I say, uh, horizontal farmers. Uh, but we will talk about more about it on the on the coming coming minutes. But let's start by me because it's not that usual that I talk uh, talk about me. Usually, I let my uh, my team speak and. Uh, uh, that's better for me. But anyway, today I'm the presenter, so I will uh, I will talk a little bit about me. So I'm um, head of agronomy at Future Gaia. But before, as uh, Johanna said, I've been working in the greenhouse industry uh, in an applied research center. And uh, before that, uh, in academic research, uh, doing my PhD. So basically, I've start, uh, started from the academic research, and then I'm now in a startup company. So Really, basically, I, I, I've tried uh, both worlds, uh, the private company and also the fundamental research, but uh, I learned from uh, all experience. And right now I have 10 years of experience in control on environment agriculture. And what do I want uh, during all my journey is not to do vertical farm, is not to do greenhouse, is not to do open field or uh, learn about plants, but it's really to improve quality and availability of uh, plant-based food. Uh, and I really want to, that to be clear. Uh, when I say availability, I don't want to, that to, the world can be split in two, uh, two parts. Uh, one, one people that, can, uh, that have the money to buy some good food, uh, which could be uh, organic food, for example, which is better for the environment and is else, uh, but it, it he had the the money to buy it, and uh, another people that don't have the money or don't doesn't want to to put some money into that uh, part of uh, of his uh, of his food, um, and then he just rely on uh, imported uh, food uh, without uh, with pesticides, for example. So um, he will have some dramatic uh, trouble in uh, for the environment and also for his own health. So at the end, it's not benefit for for the world or the or the human uh, the human body. So we have to make food uh, available. So have to it has to be a at, at a fair price. 
So basically, in right now, I'm working at Futuragei, and we started our journey uh, in 19, in 2019, so four years from now. So we are quite a young company in the vertical farming industry, but we try to to learn from uh, from other other individuals or other companies that uh, has launched some uh, quite innovative businesses into uh, the vertical farm, and we decided to to either. Uh, select the best option and on the other on the on the other end try to uh, to find uh, innovative tools to uh, to answer some uh, some other thing that was quite difficult for other vertical farmers but we'll talk about that later and that's why we we rely on the on the rotative cylinder that you have thrown on the, on the first picture but let me start firstly by the challenge of the food um so I will go very briefly on this uh, slide because everyone knows uh, we have to produce in the next four, 40 years as much as agriculture has already produced in the last eight thousand uh, years. And we have to do it with limited resources. Uh, so that we, we really need to have a, a turnaround uh, of our uh, technological and also cultural uh, aspect. We have to decrease uh, the the meat uh, and and have a balanced diet with more uh, more plant based food, uh, but we have also to produce this plant based food better with better uh, better techniques than than today. And right now we are already uh, we know we already know that. But yeah, fifty percent of the world's food production is already based on trans transgression of planetary limits. So. If the demography is still increasing, uh, it, it won't be uh, the, it won't it will be worse. So yeah, we have to to find new ways of producing food, and we have to do it uh, regarding some limitation. And by far, I think the the water limitation is the more important thing. If we look at this map by the uh, organization of the food, uh, international food, you can see that there is a lot of countries that will have some trouble with their water uh, supply. And if you look specifically to this country, you will definitely see that it is also the, 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 uh, the countries that today are uh, the more producing uh, food, plant-based food. If we look at Spain, for example, or Italy for the for the Europe, uh, you can see that they will have some trouble in those two countries, and they are more uh, more or less uh, the the countries that exported the the more uh, food to plant-based food to to northern country in in Europe, for example. So we have to find a new way of producing food. Um, also. Uh, also regarding this water stress. So this was the big picture and you already have followed some uh, interesting uh, presentation on vertical farm. So what could bring vertical farm to this trouble? And after that, we will see what, what we, we try to do at Future Gaia. But firstly, just vertical farm as a, as a big industry, what can, uh, can be done with that? On this slide, you have a, a work by the Huntington University on the, what do you need to meet the diet of one person per year if you transfer it from the open field to the vertical farm and in terms of production area, water use and energy, uh, energy needs. So for sure, the advantage of vertical farm is to divide the production area needed for um, or producing your your diet and um, you can see that you can divide it by nine if you uh, transfer every everything that is open field into a plant factory you can also divide it by a lot the water usage but you will increase a lot of the energy used because you can't uh, put a sun uh, into a into an indoor uh, an indoor building so you are you will rely on uh, on led light for example and this is to meet the diet of one person per year. If you only uh, uh, you only eat plant based food, so without any meat. So that leads me to 
one conclusion of already the, the presentation, farming system needs to complement each other. We don't have to transfer everything into a plant factory. There is some uh, part of the world that, where you, you, you have to rely on open field and it's better than into a plant factory. And in other, on the country, you will need some plant factory uh, better than uh, better working than uh, an open field. So you have to adapt to the local context and, and don't think that vertical farm will solve everything in the world. It could help on the local context, uh, depending on the local context, but it won't save everyone on the on earth. It's just another alternative solution to grow uh, to grow food. So what we try to bring, so I try to. Um, to have some uh, some bullet point for the facts. So the growth is in demand. Uh, there is some uh, the climate change that will uh, decrease water availability and increase temperature. So we know we know that we already uh, discussed about that on the previous slide. But we have also an international food dependency because we import a lot, uh, even even in France because Chargé is based in France. Um, and there is a huge increase of the for the local product, huge demand uh, for local products. Uh, we have a farming since system that is on its last legs because the average age of farmers is dramatically increasing. And we have also some changing eating habits uh, with an increase of the vegetable vegetable part uh, in your diet. Uh, so for some people that also led to a decrease of the nutritional density. Uh, if we talk about the iron uh, availability, for example, uh, which is a mineral that is really important for a human body. And what we try to um, to offer uh, to the agricultural world as Future Gaia is really an alternative solution, which is an industrial uh, solution. And in industry could bring some uh, valuable tools to, uh, to the agriculture. It's not a bad word. Um, and we will incorporate technological building blocks as software and hardware uh, for the production of safe, uh, local, LC, sustainable, tasty, nutritious, plant-based foods. Uh, and we have to do it with transparency and traceability for the consumer. So this is what we try to bring to, uh, to the agricultural world because we want to offer a stable and good income for the farmers. So that means that Future Gaia is not a growers. We are a technology provider and we want to grow food. We would uh, pro uh, propose this uh, solution to actual growers or new growers. So what does a Future Gaia farm look like? So in a Future Gaia, you will Future Gaia Farm, you will find every step of a of a, a plant journey. So starting from the seedling part to the harvesting part. Uh, so basically, it will look like a, a, a big building, not that big, but uh, for a four thousand square meter building that could produce a six uh, six or six or seven hundred tons of lettuces, for example. Uh, we don't want to have big buildings, but we want to have big bigger enough to uh, to have a real impact on the local uh, communities if you just grow some kilograms of food that's okay but you won't have the the availability of this food uh, for everyone it will be only some rich people or some uh, people living in the very uh, urban area uh, that will uh, have access to this food uh, our proposition is really to, to grow a lot of food per building uh, to increase the availability by decreasing the price of this food at the end. So we, it will look like this. So this was a 3D, uh, the first the previous slide was a 3D uh, simulation, but it looks like this when you are inside a farm. So we have a farm in the south of France, actually. Um, so the door is open if you want to visit it. I will be very happy to um to be a to be a guide on that. So we have a different uh, robotic platform and and, and different uh, climate room. And if we go uh, more in detail, we have the growth zone, which could have uh, multiple uh, layers of uh, of rotative cylinders like that. Um, and we will move these cylinders. Uh, using some robotic platform. You can see uh, one robotic platform here 
or you can't see that very well, but on this one, you can see the robotic platform moving the cylinder. So that means that in the growing chamber, you won't have any uh, human uh, in this part. Everything is automated and uh, we will have some, uh, some workers uh, for the harvesting part for sure but not, uh, nobody will be uh, allowed to, to be in the gross, uh, the gross chamber uh, to be sure that we can propose uh, free of pesticides food. So you have to be sure that the sanitary aspect is at, uh, at the high, high level, highest level as possible. And sometimes in indoor environment, uh, the human body is uh, the more dangerous part of the, of the, of the, of the building. Because you can have some uh, some fungi, some bacteria on your uh, on your skin or on your uh, on your vest, etc. So we we try to have some robotic platform to increase uh, the sanitary aspect and also to uh, decrease the price of the product. Because if you move uh, four hundred cylinder, uh, which is a, a standard farm for for Futura Gaia, it's a farm with four hundred cylinders. If you move it with one or two robotic platform, it's uh, it's uh, it's easy to uh, to decrease the price of the overall uh, overall system. You don't have to rely on multiple uh, uh, multiple robotic platform. And if I go back on this slide, you can see uh, the the cylinder in, at the zoom. Uh, so in the cylinder, you you can have forty eight. A rack of plants, and we can grow this plant on the on the soil. So we won't be on, in hydropony. So that's why we we call Futura Gaia as a geopony uh, uh, solution. Uh, so we, this is really a soil in it, and we just have some basil, for example, in this cylinder. You can see some lettuces on the left, uh, and we can grow some a lot of different plants. We are just just have to be sure that the plant is not uh, that tall because the cylinder is one uh, one meter and fifty uh, centimeters of diameter. So each plant has to to have a maximum height of uh, of eighty eighty or sixty to eighty centimeter. So what are the benefits of the rotative geopony? So we rely on the soil and we are pretty sure that it's the best option, even in, in an indoor environment. Uh, plants have evolved since decades on, uh, on soil and not on, uh, on uh, hydropony, for example. So we, we want to have a, a living soil in our, our system. And I will go a little bit far on that on, uh, on, the, on the next slide. And we also have some rotation in our system. So why this? Uh, actually, it's to provide some uh, water. If I go back here. Um, so the cylinder is rotating very, very slowly. It's uh, 50 minutes per, per revolution. And the water will come at the top of the, of the cylinder and the droplets will just fall directly uh, at, the, at the bottom of the rack. And that way you don't have any drainage, you don't have any uh, loss of water. Uh, but for that, you have to, to be sure that the rotation is very, uh, is very uh, is active uh, 24, uh, 24 hours a day. So these are the benefits and I will uh, try to, to go uh, more on that on the, on the next slide. Uh, so the soil, so plants and soil naturally uh, yes for sure so all plant species have their roots colonized by microorganisms in the natural environment and we want also to be sure that in our indoor environment we can have this also and not um, and not a, a sterile sterile uh, sterile uh, environment so we want to have a living soil uh, to 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 be sure that we have some beneficial microorganism, it's really the concept of the one else topic. Uh, if you have uh, some good microbiota, microbiota, soil microbiota, you will have some good uh, plant in terms of uh, nutritional quality, and then you can have a good, uh, a happy human because he will have all uh, all his nutrients and everything will be fine for uh, for him because of this one else concept. 
So in hydropony, you can't really mimic what happens in nature and you can't have uh, uh, beneficial microorganisms. So that was why we, we didn't want to work on in hydropony, but uh, we, we decided to work on geopony because we rely on soil and we trust that soil is the best option, even in an indoor environment. And the second, the second uh, choice was really to have this cylinder and not to rely on uh, horizontal layers because we could also have some soil, but with horizontal layers. Uh, but we, what we've learned from others is also that uh, the air is lazy. Uh, so when you have uh, multiple horizontal layers in an indoor building, you have to put a lot of vents to be sure that the homogeneity of the climate is achieved. Um, so yeah, if you don't have this, there is a lot of heterogeneity in, in our system with a, with a, a cylinder, uh, you have a more homogeneous climate, uh, even with the, the, the three layers. Uh, and that's why we, we decided to work on this uh, technological solution.